What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Keep a Hoop YouTube channel. So the Brooklyn Nets lost to the Chicago Bulls, and the Nets didn't have Kevin Durant or James Harden, but you still saw a lot of the things that they had troubles with earlier on in the season, and I think that there were signs showing why I personally didn't think LaMarcus Aldridge or Blake Griffin really moved the needle for them. I think that it helps them a little bit in terms of just giving them some more depth in case someone gets hurt or, you know, they, they just need a bit more scoring punch. But overall, I really don't think it addressed any of their needs. A lot of the troubles they had in that game came in the second and third quarters. So I wanted to take a look at those quarters, take a look at some of the plays. And I think that Chicago played well and I thought that they ran some interesting things. But also just pointing out some of the things that Brooklyn still need to work on because if they... Again, I know James Harden and Kevin Durant aren't there. And if they're there, they still probably win this game. But I think there's still underlying issues that are keeping them from being consistently elite. And a lot of that is on defense. So there's a play right here where Thaddeus Young is going to get a, um, a, a, you know, he's going to set a screen and then the Nets are going to automatically switch this. Now, the Nets, if they have everyone healthy, can I think switch it a little bit more often? DeAndre Jordan is a bit more of a rim protector in the traditional sense. But other than that, um, I think with guys like um, Harden and Kyrie can switch off of each other. Um, and then you have Durant and Joe Harris can kind of switch. Um, you know, But in a situation like this where you have two slower guys in Blake Griffin, LaMarcus Aldridge, and then you have three pretty much guards in Joe Harris... Landry Shaman and Kyrie it's really hard to switch but they automatically switch this without Sadoransky even really attacking the rim so first of all I wish that they would wait a bit more to switch this um, because Sadoransky isn't even looking to be super aggressive here but they switch this automatically and they end up with a really bad matchup here Joe Harris guarding Thaddeus Young Joe Harris makes a really bad play in trying to go for the steal and it leaves Kyrie Shaman in a really bad position um, and and well, Marcus Aldridge can't even help off of Vucevic because Vucevic can knock down the three. So, you know, you have a situation here where there's really no rim protection for the Nets. Uh, Joe Harris goes for the steal. Again, no help here. And then Thaddeus Young just gets a wide open layup. Now, the, the thing I didn't like about the trade um, or the, the signing, I guess, of, of Blake Griffin um, and also... Um, you know, LaMarcus Lodgers is that I think rim protection was still their biggest need. And my only thought was LaMarcus Lodgers, you know, them getting LaMarcus Lodgers is fine, but I just wish that they would still play Nick Claxton because I, I felt like Claxton gave them a lot more rim protection, athleticism, youth, quickness. And LaMarcus Lodgers has never been a great defender, but at this point in his career, He's a minus defender, and I think it showed a lot this game. You're going to see another play here where I think they just switched too easily, and I'm pretty sure they even had an opportunity to switch back. But again, Vucevic is the one setting the screen. Him and Joe Harris switch. Now you see here, just automatic switch. Right here, if they were on the same page communication-wise, I think that LaMarcus Aldridge and Joe Harris could have switched back. Um, regardless, they don't do that. And then you're going to see the lack of rim protection and help defense that the Nets have, right? Because they're going to get the ball into Vucevic. Blake Griffin's going to help, but just absolutely does nothing. Um, and, and you see there the easy basket by Vucevic. Um, I mean, I, I just don't think that, you know, again, that, that Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Aldridge really moves the needle. I don't think it addresses any of their weaknesses. And I think that it just gave them more of what they already had, which was scoring. And I, and I don't think that they, they needed any more of that. Compared to some of the shots that Chicago has been getting, or at least, you know, the, the looks that we saw them getting so far in this video, look at how hard the Nets have to work. It's a lot of iso ball. You know, he sets a screen, uses it, goes back, pull up jump shot, <clears throat> pretty contested. And then Kyrie ends up going for a steal here, doesn't get it. You know, and then you see Blake Griffin, Lamarcus Rodgers not even trying to get back. And, and uh, Chicago was able to just for a lot of the night, um, or I guess a lot, a lot of the day, um, just outrun and, um, you know, there's multiple plays where Kyrie didn't sprint out and, and, you know, their shots again on offense, their offense was a lot more harder to come by a lot more ISO ball, but on defense as well, the, the effort wasn't there. And, and, you know, that's the, that's the thing we keep saying about the nets, right? You know, how, how good is their defense going to be come playoff time? And, and once they start playing the elite teams, cause that's, what's really going to ultimately decide how far they can get in the playoffs.
this is another play that just kind of showed the effort that they had throughout the day. Um, and some of it's also personnel. LaMarcus Aldridge used to be a solid rebounder, but, um, you know, he's never been the athletic type. <clears throat> you know, the, the Nets just get out-rebounded here. Um, you know, ends up leading to two free throws for Chicago. This is the first play coming out of halftime. So if you're the Nets, right, I'm sure Steve Nash <clears throat> talked to his guys about just being able to close out harder, trying harder on defense, really making an effort to try to come back in this game. And again, first play out, out you know, simple screen right here. And LaMarcus Aldridge, really lazy, really slow close out. Didn't even look at the screen. Um, you know, th- those are the plays that like, if you're LaMarcus Aldridge and you're coming into a game, I know he started this game, but, you know, he's not going to start once they're fully healthy. But even then, you know, he's going to be playing against some solid bench players in, in the playoffs, and you're just going to need to be on your A game and need to be focused. And he's played in big games and in the playoffs before, so I'm not 100% worried. But the fact that he's never been a great defender to begin with, and now he's slower, um, you know, he, he needs to really buy in and, and be fully engaged and, and paying attention to, to really be – um, not a negative for this team because his offense and what he can provide for this team on that end, you know, is going to be more than what, what he can do on defense. But even then, his offense is still limited compared to what he could do before. So, you know, plays like that, you know, if you're giving up to Chicago, imagine when they play the, the Sixers or, you know, the, the the Milwaukee Bucks. Like, you just can't have possessions like that in, in playoff basketball. We see a lot of the miscommunication here again, right? So if you've seen any of our past videos from earlier on in the season talking about the Nets defense, a lot of it, some of it was effort, but a lot of it was also the lack of communication that this team had. It it seemed like they were just not on the same page defensively. And I get LaMarcus Aldridge just got to this team, so maybe that improves between him and, and and his teammates. But you see here, he wants a switch, right? He's pointing it out, right? Joe Harris is late to that. First of all, I don't think they need to switch this. Um, I I would rather have like I guess a tough matchup or a tough way to tough you know situation for Aldridge because he got down score he got screened. Um, but I think he either just has to fight through it and hope Joe Harris can hold for a second, or you have Jeff Green come over, and then you can run across. But regardless, right? It's a, it's a tough situation. Um, but you see the miscommunication there. Joe Harris is late. Lamarcus has to help anyways. Daniel Tice comes in, nice pass out to Sadoransky for a wide open three. So you see the miscommunication, even when they are trying, you know, the miscommunication is still there, not on the same page defensively. So one really interesting thing about this game was that Chicago really stayed true to themselves in terms of being big, right? They held, like you see on the court right here, they have Vucevic, Markinen, and Daniel Tice, right? They have two centers, two traditional centers, and then Markinen, who's a four. All those guys around seven foot tall. And for the Nets, they stay true to themselves by staying small. And what that means, to me at least, is that Steve Nash is still prioritizing their offense. They don't want to match Brooklyn or they don't want to match Chicago's size. Um, And at that point, it's who does what, you know, what they can better or who, who takes advantage of the mismatch better, right? Because for Brooklyn, with so many guys, um, so many bigs on the floor, they have a lot of spacing. They can run, um, you know, a lot of, I guess, screens. And, and then you get a lot of mismatches. It's a, a lot easier to drive on those kind of mismatches. And for Chicago, you just have the size advantage. You can go in down low, get a lot more rebounds, take advantage of mismatches down there. We can see how, for Chicago, this is so beneficial for them and how it hurts Brooklyn, right, on the defensive end. So Daniel Tice ends up missing this shot. But again, not a lot of rebounding on the court. When Jeff Green's your center, it's going to be hard, right? So Cher Brown Jr. gets the rebound. They reset it. And then look, you now have Jeff, Jay, uh, Jeff Green having a guard, Nikola Vucevic. Um, just not fair for Jeff Green. He can try as hard as he wants, but it's a tough cover to begin with. Um, and then he just gets a really easy shot, right? So I think that as the season goes on, right, I, I do think that Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Aldridge, their communication with the Nets, especially on defense, will get a little better. But neither of those guys were ever good defenders. And at this point in their careers, they won't be, right? But they just need to cut down on the mistakes and just provide enough effort on that side of the ball. And I think that the Nets should still be fine. But what I worry about the most is the two teams they're going to be going up against probably 
right, in the conference finals, and then probably to get to the conference finals are going to be the Bucks and the Sixers. Now, those two teams have a lot of paint presence. For Milwaukee, you have Giannis, who loves to get to the rim, play around the rim, play in the paint. And then for Philadelphia, you have Joel Embiid, who was having an MVP-type season before he got injured. You know, came back last night, looked fine. Those two teams might just live in the paint and thrive between just getting to the rim, getting rebounds, and getting to the free throw line. And it's not like those two teams don't have good shooters on their team, and it's not like they don't play defense either. Now, Brooklyn is still going to be favored because of that, you know, because of their big three. Super unstoppable, really scary to face in the playoffs. And their defense probably doesn't need to be great, right, for them to be in the finals. It just needs to be solid. But there's still a lot of mis, you know, miscommunication, a lot of um, mishaps, and some of it's effort too, which is the most concerning part because at this point in the season, you want to be ramping up. You want to be playing some of your best basketball. Um, and I get Chicago on the road. It might be a trap game, but it's, it's you know, you still have to show the effort. And, and it's a little concerning. Uh, again, I still think they're the favorites, but you still see why some people weren't really impressed with the, the LaMarcus Aldridge and Blake Griffin signings because it, it just doesn't move the needle. It doesn't make them any better at the things they were bad at. It just makes them better at the things they were already good at, which I don't think they needed any more help in. Right? So it'll be interesting to see. Hopefully, my hope, Ellie, and, and I think it's the hopes of a lot of Nets fans is that Claxton gets more playing time and is kind of the anchor for that second unit defensively. But we'll see what, what happens going forward. Neither Steve Nash nor, you know, Mike D'Antoni are necessarily the, the defensive geniuses or, or defensive oriented coaches. So this might just be what, what Nets fans get going for. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll be back probably either Tuesday or Wednesday with another video. Uh, please remember to like, subscribe, share, and comment and follow us on our social media pages. Links will be in the description below. Also, thanks to everyone who subscribed. We have passed 200 subscribers. So uh yeah just trying to work hard on creating consistent content and then next up hopefully getting to 300 soon uh thanks again for watching we'll see you guys again soon peace